Hello everyone and welcome to our class video about parallelograms. Our learning goal for this video is that you'll be able to describe and apply the key properties of, guess what, a parallelogram. Okay, so first we kind of got to talk about what a parallelogram is. You may remember from your middle school math classes that a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. So, in the example that I've drawn below, the top and bottom sides are parallel, as indicated by those arrows, and also the right and left sides are parallel. When that happens, when we have two pairs of parallel sides, that automatically creates a lot of very interesting properties. So, let's take a look at those. For example, the opposite angles of a parallelogram are always congruent. This is because we're creating, essentially with parallel lines, alternate interior and corresponding angles in a lot of locations. We'll look at it more in depth in class, but this would cause angle B and angle D to be congruent, and also angle A and angle C to be congruent. They're on opposite sides of the parallelogram, and they are congruent. Notice that B and D are both acute, and A and C are both obtuse. Also, the consecutive angles of a parallelogram are always supplementary. What do I mean by consecutive angles? The word consecutive means next in order. So, for example, Angle B and angle C are consecutive angles. Using our parallel lines terminology, however, we also know that angles B and C are same side interior angles. This causes them to be supplementary. Also, because the other set of sides is parallel, I know that Angles C and D are same side interior, and those are supplementary. So, B and C add up to 180 degrees. Angles D and C add up to 180 degrees. Angles A and D add up to 180 degrees. And angles A and B add up to 180 degrees. Okay? So the angles that are next in order in the parallelogram are supplementary. All right, let's look at some properties about segments and sides. Our third property of a parallelogram is that opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. That is to say that side AB and side CD are congruent, and side BC and side AD are congruent. Why is this? Well, whenever those sides are parallel, if I draw in this diagonal, diagonal DB, I create two congruent triangles. We could show using one of our triangle congruence theorems, such as angle side angle, that those two triangles are congruent. That would cause the sides A, B, and C, D, and A, D, and B, C to have to be congruent. We'll look at that also more in detail during class. Finally, our last property is that di the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Okay, so let's draw in those two diagonals, diagonal B, D, and diagonal A, C. If they bisect each other, that means they cut each other in half. That's the meaning of the word bisect. So AC is cut in half by BD, and BD is cut in half by AC. There, that diagonal has been bisected. This can also be shown using congruent triangles, because I have a congruent triangle up here to this one down here or you could also use the other pair. But because those triangles are congruent, we know that the diagonals bisect each other. 
Again, we'll look at that in more detail during class. So, using those properties, let's try some example problems. Now, I will preface by saying that it is impossible for me to put in every different kind of parallelogram example problem into this video. That would make the video way too long. So, I don't think you want me to do that. So, we'll just go through a couple, and that'll just require you to think a little bit about, okay, in any given problem, which one of our four properties of a parallelogram would help you solve the problem? It should be pretty easy to determine based off whether we're talking about sides or about angles. Okay, well, we're looking at angles in this problem, so we'll probably use some of our properties about angles. Hmm. Ah! Oh. So, if opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent, I know that angle Z must be congruent to 120 degrees. Oops. All right. That was easy. Additionally, I can use the fact that I know that the opposite sides of the parallelogram are parallel. This creates alternate interior angles. So, because of that, my angle Y here is congruent to the, th the 35 because it's an alternate interior angle. So Y is 35 degrees. How could I figure out the measure of angle X? Well, we do have two triangles in the picture, and the measure of angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. If that's the case, then I know that the measure of x is 25 degrees, so that the measure of 25 and 120 and 35 makes 180. This would also require that this angle be 25 degrees, because they're alternate interior, so that that triangle could add up to 180 degrees. There, we've found the measures of x, y, and z. Let's look at one more example problem. In example 2, we're asked to find the measure of angle n, which is up here. Hmm. Well, given that there's x's in the picture, I imagine we probably need to find the value of x. Not always the case, but let's go for it. What do I know about angles L and M? Hmm. I know that they are same side interior angles. They're also consecutive angles, which we know to be supplementary. If they're supplementary, we know that they have to add up to 180 degrees. I can use that to write my equation. So I can say that 5x plus 18 plus 4x minus 9 equals 180 degrees. There. Combining like terms, I would say that 9x plus 9 equals 180. Subtract 9 from both sides, and I would have 9x equals 171. If I divide both sides by 9, that would lead me to conclude that x is equal to 19. Have I answered the question yet? Not yet. I haven't found the measure of angle n. So, hmm, angle n, I know because all opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent, that that one is going to be congruent to angle L. So, I should figure out what the measure of angle L is. So, 5 times 19 plus 18 would give me 113 degrees. Therefore, I also know that angle N is 113 degrees. I can check by plugging into angle M, which would come out to be 67 degrees. This verifies that I did my equation correctly because 113 and 67 do add up to 180 degrees. And similarly, angle O is 67. Okay, so there's a couple example problems for you. We'll look at some more during class. All right, see you guys later.